Greetings Marsh here and welcome to episode 60 of my modded Factorio playthrough. In this episode we are going to set up a simple train station and mine some coal that is kind of too far away for belts. Enjoy! Alright, to do some trains we'll need some tracks. Train stops, rail signals, chain signals. So the first thing we need to do is design our rail station here. Let's make a locomotive and we'll need some cargo wagons. Let's plop a train on there. And let's do four car sounds reasonable. So when placing trains, you kind of have the choice between do you want to have one locomotive or two? In other words, a single-headed train with a locomotive in the front, or a double-headed with locomotive in the front and the back. There's advantages and disadvantages to each. Uh, the advantage of having locomotive in the front only is that it's less dead weight of an empty car in the back that you're not using, or a heavy locomotive. But the disadvantage is, is they can't back up or go backwards, so you have to make sure they always have a forward path to get back to the rail network. And the, the advantage of having a double-headed train is that you can have a train station like this where it just dead ends and then turns around the other way, so it's easier to set up as far as the rail network goes, but it's dead weight. But uh, this, this playthrough, I think I'll do single-headed trains, why not? And they could be of any size that you want them to be. Uh, four seems sufficient for now. We're not going to be using that many trains, so we don't need them to be huge at this point in the game. And you also kind of have the choice of, do you want to unload from one side of the train or both sides? So in other words... When you have the chest on each side... Do you just want to have one set of inserters? Or two, because it unloads faster? For simplicity's sake... I think I'll unload from just one side. And it helps to have chests because the inserters are faster if they're inserting into or out of a chest. Especially if it's into and out of a chest. Although after this point, you kind of have to deal with, well, how do you balance it? And at least with Vanilla Factorio, that can be kind of a problem of having the perfect setup of inserters for balancing reasons. But we can kind of make this work. They come along here, and then they all combine into four, and into two, and then into your one. And luckily this is all that's required to balance something into one belt from four, assuming all the, the belts were balanced to begin with. And we kind of can make sure that with using near inserters. So let's kind of give this a quick shot and see how it balances. Looks like we are filling up on concrete soon, so that's an excellent thing to use. Although not really, because <laughs> it won't let me uh, drag and drop them along there. So how about our increasing stack of ammo? 7.3k of armor piercing magazines at this point. Let's equally place these across all the cars. Let's see what happens. Might help to have a fast belt here. seems pretty good. It's probably not perfect, but it seems like it'll get the job done. There's a couple other things we can do to balance this out. 
Well, each train car holds 40 slots, so we don't want it to be able to unload any more than 40 slots in these boxes. Otherwise, it's just going to be moving needless amounts of products around. So 40 divided by six different boxes is 6.7. So in other words, if we have seven slots open, yep, then the chest will be big enough to hold the content of the whole rail car. Just to minimize the amount of time that the train has to sit here getting unloaded. Make a blueprint out of it. Let's do a rail. And how about a wooden chest? And how about a U for unload? But we also need to have the loading variant as well. Well, luckily it's pretty straightforward. It's basically the same thing but the other direction. And then however many belts go in can have a balancer to properly go into the train. So let's do another blueprint. Same thing. Rail. Box. And an L for load. And let's put those in the blueprint book. Okay, we need to build some rail stations. Let's see, the input of coal is around this area. The same with sapphirite. But taking a train all the way in here might be a little inconvenient. Something like that. We have a second one right there. And we're going to be building a whole bunch of rail. So might as well get this set up to, let's say, a thousand rails. Okay, let's put the trains in here. We need to connect them back to the rail system. That doesn't really exist yet, but... Hmm. Oh, I just noticed that these aren't placed exactly in the same spot. <laughs> Well, we can't have that. There we go. We need to loop this around because they're single-headed trains, so... They need a way to get back to the network. There we go. So, for simplicity's sake right now, I'm not going to do any kind of, um, let's say, unified method of building train tracks where there's patterns and all stuff like that. I kind of just want to get this built right now because I have the feeling that this is all kind of temporary. Just getting this done quickly so we don't run out of resources while we're building our war washing setup. Because we will run out before that gets done, so we need to have this set up to buy us some time. So we can do some simple rail, rail signals here. We put a signal here, which blocks the trains off from coming into the station. And we have a signals here to make the stations their own section. And now you see how the rest of the network is unconnected to that. Let's see, signal there, signal there. And you can just kind of look at the colors to make sure that this makes sense about 
what sections do you want the trains to be parked at? So if a train comes out here and this section is right up right here is blocked, it will park here, which is fine. And then if it wants to, let's put that there, put that there, there we go. If the train wants to enter this main one line network, it'll have to stop here. So it won't park in a way that'll block the train that's on the network from coming along here. This is a two way track so they can go in either direction, but this part is one way. So the train will park here if it has to, and then move forward, park there if it has to, move forward. So now from this point, we don't want any rail signals on this section that it's going to stay a single rail for the entire way down with no signals or anything because otherwise if there's signals on there it's going to count them as separate sections and the trains are going to clog so as far as coal we have two options we have the smaller patch up here 2.4 million or the big arrow which is 11 million the arrow would make more sense but one it's farther away but two i was kind of thinking that i would use this area around here for doing the ore sorting. So I'm worried that putting a train track all the way over there might get in the way of just building the setup. So perhaps it would be better to pull from this coal instead. And as far as steratite is concerned, it looks like we only have one option. It's this big patch right here. So there's this giant coal patch. There's infinite coal and it requires water to mine, which is interesting. Probably don't really need to deal with that right now because this patch is much larger than I think we really need. So just a couple of miners ought to get the job done. So let's do the loading station. Let's just do 20 miners and see how that works. We don't need to fill it up all the way. So we're really not using coal that quickly. Okay, we'll send that in. Now we kind of need to move these rails all the way down. Probably the best way to do this is to use the mining vehicle and just drag some rails behind us. And then we, can, on the way back, we can place some power poles to bring the power up there. And let's just say that's the main line right here. And we need to hook this back up to the main line as well. And we'll make it its own little loop like this. It only needs to have one train in there at any given time, so that'll work. However, trains will come from both directions. So he needs to have that there. And let's swing it down here along the road. I used the wrong station here. I did the unloading station instead of the loading station. Luckily, it works just as well. We can just change the position of all these around and have them face down. Looks like we need to pick up a few more of these inserters. And let's rename this train station. Coal load. And we'll make it completely black. And copy that color. 
Let's go running back to base and get that train set up. All right, we need to figure out which one of these trains is going to be for coal. Probably the top one. So we'll copy those colors in here, but change the name of this train station to Coal Unload. And while we're here, let's name this Steerotite Unload. Now another thing we need is to get these trains filled up. Luckily, we're in close proximity to fuel. And probably the easiest way to load these trains... It's with some uh, angled inserters here. Right, pick up from the right, and drop down. And I'll just pick up from the belt as it goes underneath the train, and drop fuel onto the train. Okay, we'll take it off of this belt right here. Let's pick up some more inserters and then go for a ride. Let's see, we'll need to combine the old mine and the new mine together with some warehouses. So let's do it like we did previously. So the old mine comes in right around here. And here's a spot down here where we can just set this up. Something like this. mine that always gets priority. And then the new mine. The circuit network. Turning it off. The stereotype is more than 2,000. Sorry, that is if stereotype is less than 2,000. That would have messed things up. And then we have our unloading belt. Which comes in through there. And the train's not completely full with fuel, but it doesn't need to be. I guess it would be shortly. Let's get inside. And let's set up a schedule for it and see how it works. So we want to add a station. It'll go to coal load and it'll wait there until inactivity. In other words, five seconds of nothing being put in or put out of the train, which basically means that it's full. And then it will come to coal unload the same condition of wait five seconds if nothing's been unloaded it must mean it's empty so go back and let's set it to automatic and here we go it's nice having the lights along the track so we can actually see where we're going even though it's driving itself. Actually, hold on. Got to turn that off for a second because there's nothing in there. Because we've got these guys to put in here. This isn't unloading very quickly. Maybe we need more miners. The problem is, is most of these miners aren't doing a thing because they're connected to the infinite ore. Well, let's put a bunch more of these on here then. And we have a balancer right here already, so we can just run it in there. A lot of these are infinite. So yeah, I'm probably going to have to do something about getting water in here so those move faster. But is there any water nearby? And that's an N. Ah, I'm going to set this to 
manual for now. Do we have water bores? I think we do. Yeah, let's do that. That's just an easy, quick way of getting free water when none is available. It costs electricity, and it's not very fast. But it gets the job done. So let's put it here. We got a few connections right here to do. There we go. Is it holding up? Uh, nope. Well, it might just be filling up miners. Yeah, it seems to be. Probably should have it set up like this, so we prioritize doing the infinite stuff only. But because this is just water and water is free, um, I'll just let it run like it wants to. And we can improve this further by upgrading these. It's unrealistically showing like the mining is happening very slowly, when it really isn't. We just don't need ore this fast. But since it's just being set up, it appears like it's moving very slowly. Because it's building a buffer. And we really don't need these Ek inserters. They are plenty fast. But let's just use them anyway. You never know, in the future we might upgrade things. Alright, well let's pretend that this thing is filled up. It's about halfway, but let's pretend that it's filled up with halfway. What happens? We'll send it to coal unload. And around we go. Ah, that makes sense. These need to be two separate networks like they are up here. So let's set this to manual. Remove that. And we'll put those right there to make it a separate network. Now it should be fine. And it's unloading very quickly. Better we'll get out of the way, because that train's gonna go. Ah! Oh wait, that's not right. That was for Steerotype, not for coal. Coal goes... Around here, let's see. Probably somewhere around here. There goes the train, Hong Kong. So let's put the storehouse here. Belt going in from the mines. Belt going in from the train. Let's see, and the belt coming back out. But it can be a yellow. There's the belt going out. And for the train, circuit network, same as the others. Coal is less than 2,000. Turn on. And it looks like. This path here will be good. Let's see, can we do a nice long underground right here to cross all of this? Yes. Awesome. And boom, in comes the coal. So that disaster is averted. We could probably get rid of this warning, because we don't need to worry about it anymore. And that train will come by eventually and probably spend its days parked right here. Okay. 
and the other half of this is some steratite. Well, it looks like we've used up all our sulfuric acid. Because we're just not using enough coal to really produce the sulfur right now. I mean, we could create a bunch of sulfur by just burning all of this. Because right now, we're most of our stuff that we're burning for fuel is this charcoal, which is produced cleanly from trees. So we could create a bunch of sulfur by just forcing this to run. But as long as it's not a critical problem, I'm fine with just letting the sulfur come in when it comes in because only a little while ago we had a sulfur overload and didn't know what to do with it. So I don't want to, like, reverse the problem. Now we don't have a sulfur problem. I don't want to make another sulfur problem by <laughs> creating more logic. So this is good enough. Looks like lead is still trying to catch up. Let's see. Well, since this got disconnected, probably should reconnect it. Because we need our stereotype. Oh, did this logic not be set up correctly? Uh, nope. This is this is set to sanguinite. That's why it's running. It's not set to rubite. There we go, rubite. So, oops. We built up a collection of about 10,000 rubite unnecessarily. Oh well, it'll catch up. Eventually. I noticed this train is zipping back and forth, so inactivity is probably the wrong setting for this. Let's wait for it to come into the station, and then shut it down, because the problem is that there's just no coal usage right now. So it sits there for five seconds, and then it's like, hey, there's nothing happening, and then it just zooms off. So for coal unload, let's switch this to empty cargo. And for coal load, probably full cargo. That ought to work a little better and be a little less glitchy. So now it's parked. That's the end of this episode. On the next one, we're going to expand our train network a little farther and get some steerotite and bring that back to the base. I'll see you later.